And that CPI print, what a shocker, Jill. Yes, Tom, it was a pretty bad print. Now, look, I think the 0.5% uh, the fall year on year in November being worse than economists' expectations, a lot of that is being dragged down by, you know, a lot of volatility in food and energy, specifically pork prices. Remember, this is China's favorite meats, um, really, really dragging down that gauge over the course of this year. But even if you strip out some of those figures and look at core CPI, it only rose, I think, about 0.6% year on year. I mean, we're looking at really, really, really weak inflation numbers here out of China. A lot of economists thinking that a lot of those deflationary pressures are really going to persist into 2024. I believe Goldman Sachs, among others, uh, is forecasting an annual CPI print of just 0.5% uh, for 2024. So really indicating that a lot of these price pressures are not going away. Obviously, also, as we know, uh, deflationary threats, um, you know, sort of it becomes, uh, the, what ultimately threatens is it become it, it threatens to become a downward spiral if you can't really shore a lot of those things up. If people are holding off on purchases and the expectation that um, prices are just going to continue to move lower and lower, then you sort of have the self-fulfilling prophecy of, you know, more deflation begets additional deflation. So I think that really anything that policymakers can put out uh, in the coming year to signal that they're worried about, you know, sort of reflation in the economy, um, you know, sort of helping those numbers, I think, is something that, um, you know, a lot of traders are going to be looking out for. Jill, one of the things that we've looked through in prior years, and I remember one of our colleagues did a great piece in the middle last year, is that you know pork prices are entirely independent of the economic cycle, and there's no kind of statistically relevant correlation in time between pork prices and any kind of economic cycle, nor kind of rates. Uh, so I understand this is really about a sentiment blow out there. They can't have headline numbers in deflation. So to what extent do leaders react to pork prices that they know aren't related to the economic cycle but feel they have to due to sentiment or do they still try to look through this temporary noise? Uh, yes, Mark, that's a very good point. Uh, indeed, pork prices are cyclical. I think, though, when you look at, um, again, looking at even that headline gauge or that core gauge being as weak as it, as it is, indicates that problem with weak demand. So maybe policymakers look past that and think a lot more about what other kinds of easing do they have to, uh, your, what their other kinds of support, rather, do they have to implement for the economy going into next year? I think if you looked at the, uh, the readout from the Politburo meeting on Friday, so this is a meeting of the Communist Party's top 24 leaders, including Xi Jinping, uh, there was certainly more of an emphasis on this idea of fiscal support playing a, a bigger role than monetary easing in the coming year just because of the way that they moved around some of that language. Uh, I think you can actually make an argument that ahead of the, uh, you know, this rumor that maybe there's a bit more um, state intervention to help buoy markets this afternoon. Um, you know, earlier this morning, a lot of the disappointment maybe came from the fact that we saw a change in that policy language that maybe indicated that monetary easing uh, was, uh, was not really a major factor into 2024. Now, I will leave you, though, with one thing is that what this ultimately means when you're combining this idea of, uh, you know, maybe there's not going to be a whole lot of policy rate cuts going into 2024, plus deflationary pressures uh, continuing to pose an issue, is this does raise uh, the fact that, um, you know, real borrowing costs within the Chinese economy right now are quite high. And if those trends aren't really going away, it's likely that those are going to continue to be a factor of really, really high borrowing costs, um, at least on a, a real level, uh, going into 2024. So really just another challenge for the Chinese economy.